Hey everyone, um, happy Friday. Happy first slow read session of the year. Um, we're gonna wait a few minutes uh, to let everyone in, but I will introduce myself and, uh, and then we will get started. I'll tell you a little bit about how we do this. So, hello, my name is Njeri. I am uh, the mind behind Onyx Pages. That's my YouTube channel for those of you who might be joining specifically through the slow read and who might not already be familiar with Onyx Pages. So Onyx Pages is a booktube channel where I read, review, and blurred out about Black science fiction and fantasy with a particular interest in Afrofuturism, African futurism, and African Jujuism um, as the forms of literature that I, that I enjoy. The Octavia E. Butler Slow Read is exactly what it sounds like. It is an event that started in 2020, co-hosted by myself, Tatiana from Musical Tati, the booktube channel, and Isis, the mastermind behind Sister Sci-Fi, Bookstore, and so many other things. Uh, and we have been reading and will be facilitating the reading of all of Octavia Butler's published works from Kindred all the way to Unexpected Stories. And if you are interested in being a part of the journey, then all you need to do is find us if you Google Octavia E. Butler slow read, um, you should be able to find us. We've, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. You can find us through YouTube, but the main platform to register for the slow read events is Eventbrite. When you register on Eventbrite, then you'll be on our list. We'll let you know about uh, all of the sessions, about the slow read, um, the live show, you can get tickets. Um, they are free to $10. You can make a contribution of $5 or $10, um, which will go into the cost of running um, a two and a half year slow read. Um, and we'll have contests and prizes and we'll let you know about different events um, that are happening along the way. So here is how the slow read will work. Uh, slow reading is a process of um, getting into the writing and getting into the rhythm of what you're reading and focusing on comprehension and engagement as opposed to speed. So when you slow read, it's kind of like reading for, um, well, for me, it was like reading for English class um, where we would just like read, have assigned one chapter or two chapters each week. And we would talk about the chapters as we went through so that the reading experience is more collective. What we've experienced in our last slow read, which was for Wild Seed, was that after talking about the book and engaging with each other, um, we started to think, not necessarily similarly, but we would follow the same kinds of themes. We had questions about Dora. We had themes around Anyanwu's power. Um, and all of that culminated in the discussions that we were able to have during the live show. So the slow read, you don't have to participate in the slow read in order to go to the live show. And you don't have to participate in the live show if you've gone to uh, the slow read. It's um, another, simply another way to engage. So we'll probably be doing three to four reading sprints. And for those of you who are new to the concept of reading sprints, it basically means that I'm gonna be putting on a timer and I'll be turning off my microphone and I will be reading on camera silently to myself for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, however we choose. Uh, and you will do the same. And then once we're done, I will turn on the uh, my mic again and I'll throw some questions out. Uh, I'll ask some fun things like what page are you on? What are you enjoying? I might ask some like word association type uh, questions so that we can get as much engagement as possible in the chat. It is my hope and you are, you are cordially invited to join me and guests because as we go on, there will be guests um, for each of the, each of the sessions. Um, my, my hope is that you'll be a part of this and start today and finish and come to the live show. So that would be great if you could attend as many as you as you can. The sessions will be always starting at seven o'clock and they'll probably be about 90 minutes long to two hours long because I know it's a it's a pretty big chunk of time. All right, so let's just see before we get in who's here. So as I go through um, the list and show your comments on screen, please let me know um, 
you know, just how you're feeling about starting Mind of My Mind by Octavia Butler. Is it a first time read for you? Are you rereading it? Have you already started? Um, so how are you feeling just getting into it? And for those who are coming back from the Wild Seed slow read, what are the big questions you might have about, or what are you looking forward to when it comes to this uh, this second edition in the pattern of series? And before I go to the comments, I'm going to just read the back here. So this is my uh, copy of Mind of My Mind. It's the newest edition with the um, sort of slightly abstract, um, slightly monochromatic, although there's duochrome, I guess, um, covers. So the back reads, a young woman comes into her own power and challenges the ruthless man who controls her in this brilliantly provocative novel from the award-winning author of Parable of the Sower. So already we're seeing um, a young woman in a relationship, in relationship um, with a ruthless man who controls her. So that notion of uh, male, female, which we talked about um, in, in, in terms of like the gender binary in Wild Seed um, and the pa and power, right? Abuses of power um, between um, this older, older man and younger woman. So we're seeing this theme again. And here's the synopsis. Mary is a treacherous experiment. Her creator, an immortal named Doro, has molded the human race for generations, seeking out those with unusual talents like telepathy and breeding them into a new subrace of humans who obey his every command. The result is Mary, a young black woman living on the rough outskirts of Los Angeles in the 1970s, who has no idea how much power she will soon wield. Doro knows he must handle Mary very carefully or risk her ending like his previous experiments, dead, either by her own hand or Doro's. What he doesn't suspect is that Mary's viral telepathic abilities may soon rival his own power, creating the potential for her to break free of his control once and for all and shift the course of humanity. And I just, as I read that, first of all, that sounds amazing and I'm excited. Um, but as I read that, I'm just really, so it occurred to me that Dana in Kindred, um, her birthday was in 1976 and she lived in, okay, so Dana from Kindred lived in Los Angeles in, um, in and around 1976. And Mary is a young black woman living on the rough outskirts of Los Angeles in the 1970s. So in terms of Octavia Butler's imagination, I just wanna point out that connection to you. So it appears that Dana from Kindred and Mary from Mind of My Mind were in the same fictional place in the world at the same time. So if you've read Kindred and you know about Dana's experience trying to find work, her time travel stuff, her relationship stuff, just maybe as you're reading this, think about what that might mean, that there's a black woman experiencing time travel in 1976. There's a black woman who's telepathic and they both live in Los Angeles in the 70s, okay? All right, mind blown. My, my mind is blown because I didn't realize that. All right, so let's say hello. Hello, Tommy. also sitting right over there. Um, hi again, Michelle, nice to see you. Hello, 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 Zoya Nila, always wonderful to see you. And introverted black girl, hello, happy new year. Uh, Jersey Femme, happy that you're happy to start the book. Um, welcome, Terry. First timer, but long Butler fan. Looking forward to the read. Welcome. Hi, Lynn, your first time. Great. Hi, Gina, nice to see you again. All right, Christina, welcome back. You were here for Wild Seed. And Danielle, hello. Um, okay, who else is here? Everybody's welcoming everybody because we're like happy family. Hey, Emere, nice to see you. Hi, Jacob. Hey, Sherry. 
Hello, Isis. First time read, cool, cool. First time read and you wanted to wait till we had the slow read. Well, thank you very much for waiting and following along. Oh, you, you started the first chapter? Cool, I'm excited too. Oh, second read, we'll be listening to the audiobook. Cool, oh, that's that reminds me, I need to, I need to listen through the audiobook as well. Hey, Tati, you will be rereading. Can't wait to see how the story unfolds. You're gonna try a hybrid read with audio. Yes, I need to do that myself. First time reading Mind in My Mind, you'll start today with us. Thank you. First time wondering how the heck Doro is gonna pull off his evil antics in the 70s. I hope Doro is and gone by the end of the book. <laughs> you wanna see less of Doro, but you guess you're wrong after hearing the synopsis. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my place, here we go. You read the series, but it's been more than 20 years. Same same for me. So it, it it's gonna feel like a whole new book, Terry, for me as well. First time read, coming in after Wild Seed, going in blind, muted you while you read the back. Gotcha, ready to see what Anyan and Doro, different groups of people are doing. Awesome, Octavia Butler has a theme that keeps coming up for me, male character that is unlikable. Absolutely, for sure. Mind blowing. Hey, Nina, excited about this read, happy. Hey, Brie, nice to see ya. You came upon this and forgot we were starting today and look right on time. First time reading this one, still thinking about the Wild Seed discussions, looking forward, welcome memory reframed. Hi, reread for me, hi, Monique. And, oh, I think I've missed somebody. Natalie Strickland, hi, and Jerry, first, first time ever reading any Octavia Butler. Well, hello, welcome. The glasses, thank you. Zilul, it's your first time, Nina. Awesome, excited for the read. Wondering if Mary will be able to finally get rid of Doro. Will she live as long as him? These are the questions. These are the questions. There's love. Listen to the first few chapters, great. First time reading Mind My Mind, looking forward to the slow read. First time after Wild Seed. Just finished Wild Seed a few days ago, going in knowing nothing about the book, awesome. And Wild Seed was great. Yes, it was. Okay, so um, we are going to start our first sprint. So there are a lot of new folks here. So what I'm going to do is have a pretty modest first sprint, um, just 15 minutes, uh, and, the, and then we'll do them a little bit longer. So, um, so 15 minutes of reading starts at the hour at quarter after the hour. Okay, so I'm gonna show that and then I will find a timer. Actually, I'll just use a Google timer. And we'll do 15 minutes, not 15 seconds. And then I'll share my screen so you can see the timer too. Okay. All right, so 15 minutes. And um, so as you're reading, um, the question that I'll be asking you when we come back after the 15 minutes is gonna be just one word, first impressions. It can be any word how you're feeling, a character name, um, the background, the scene, anything, right? One word. So we're gonna start our 15 minutes right now. Happy reading.
Well, so much for <laughs> Doro um, not showing up right away and being potentially redeemable, although nobody said that. Okay, so that was the first 15 minutes. So now we'll take a few minutes just to chat. So my question was first impression. So um, no matter where you are in your reading, just one word to describe what, <laughs> what has just begun with mind of my mind. So um, I am not very far at all. It sometimes takes me a little bit to get into the book. So I'm only on page six. Um, and just I've just finished the first little segment um, of the of the prologue. So as you can see, I'm annotating um, with an orange marker, just highlighting the passages that are important. And I'm almost finished um, the Rena section. Um, sorry, the Doro section. All right. So let's see what you have to say. A few hellos. Hi, Auntie Zeddy's read aloud time. <laughs> Some more hellos. Hi, Lady Boss. Hot mess is my word. Oh, yes. Annoyed, 100%. Unchanging, yes. Loving Emma's strength, cool. Foolishness, <laughs> all right. Control, yeah. Woman victimized, yes. Um, Emma, yep. And so, yes, one word, one word. So um, for me, I am tired. I'm just, I'm just tired. Um, I'm tired of the ease with the ease and the arrogance of Doro. And um, I am intrigued by the layers of um, victimization that Octavia Butler is giving us in the Rena um, Mary dynamic. Um, and I'm interested in Doro's perception of how Doro has changed in in the way that he approaches breeding of women, of humans. So um, that's kind of interesting. Um, all right, and irritated, yes. Intrigued, yes. That's your word, got you. Visual words work. On page seven, surprised. You miss Emma's African name. Yes. Yeah. Controlling. Yes. And just to let you know, um, we are, while we're reading sort of together, um, we're going to be at different places. So I think it would, it's, it would be painful to try to hold people to not give like spoilers. Um, and so here are the thoughts around, around spoilers. So, um, if we're reading, like try not to to tell us if you if you're further along. So the slow read has been divided into parts one, parts two, and parts three. So just try to keep get a sense of like what page people are on, and um, if you have already gotten to a point in the book where you've reached a particular reveal or a twist in the plot. Um, you know, don't share that. Let let people sort of discover it as they go along. Um, and if you think you might potentially be revealing something, then just put in all capital letters, spoiler, potential spoiler, and then say what you have to say so that people who are sensitive to spoilers will know to skip your comment. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, Okay, I see that there's some comments about, um, yeah, not giving too many details and, and things like that. Yeah, that just helps people to, um, to move with the, to move with the plot and to discover the story for themselves as it unfolds. 
Um, which is one of the reasons why I ask for maybe like just one word. How are you feeling? What are you thinking? We're not trying to give up too many um, too many plot points unless unless you're like me and I'm behind a lot of a lot of people. I might mention a few things, but I try to keep my my comments to themes as well. All right. So um, our next. Let me let me see. So I think 15 minutes was sort of just to get us into it to see what a, a sprint looks like. So I'm thinking that our next um, sprint should be uh, 25 minutes long. We'll just increase it by 10 minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll get a little longer each time. So 25 minutes. And we'll just start um, 25. Oh, I'll just put up the. Okay, yeah. So um, in terms of the comment around not giving details, yeah, you love the one word to if need be. Yes, that's. That's great. And if you have comments, like interpretive comments, um, like this one, like, you know, what what does Anyanwun's name mean from Wild Seed or so on, then that's great to share. Thanks, Isis, for doing that. Okay. All right, so we will start shortly. Um, we'll start in about three minutes. And I will share the screen again. Oh, I like that screen share better. Um, and one of the things that I would ask you to think about um, while we're reading Mind of My Mind is what does this book do um, for the series? So um, oftentimes, um, I actually like the way that um, Tatian explained this when we were discussing um, Wild Seed, which is that um, Octavia Butler's um, sequels are more generational. So it's not like the story book two will start a week after book one ended. Um, oftentimes years, maybe decades or generations will will uh, will pass before we get to the next book. Um, and I, I think that's quite fascinating. And that also opens us up to the question as to why, right? So why, why would Mind of My Mind start with a first, um, with a prologue that tells us the story of, gives us some backstory about Rena and about Mary. So what does that, what does that serve, right? So I'm um, just curious what you might think about that. And hello, Cabe, nice to see you. All right. And um, another question that I wanna throw out to you as well um, is what are your hopes for the story? So what are you hoping um, Mind of My Mind will resolve for you? What are you hoping to understand better? What are you hoping to see? What are your hopes for uh, book two of the Patternist series? Is there something that happened in Wild Seed that still needs to be resolved for you? Do you want us to you want to experience something different, whether it's points of views or plots or um, or the magic part of things or history or the character development? What are your hopes? Hello. Yeah, you're interested because this book was released before the last one. Yeah, so we are reading it in the recommended order and Tati, you will probably have more thoughts about that if you wanted to add that into the chat because yeah, um, her books were published in different orders. And, I, and I, I haven't yet done any reading to find out why that is, but it is a pretty fascinating, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty fascinating to see how the story even unfolded for her uh, and in terms of what she ended up publishing and when. We'll start our 25 minutes now. Okay, happy reading. See you in 25 minutes.
All right, that was 25 minutes, second sprint. Why don't we start by um, just letting us know what page you're on or what percentage you are in the book. Right now I am midway through page 21. So where are you in the book? And then the question um, that I had for you, of course, right now, if you wanna just um, share one word um, that describes your feelings, so a feeling word um, to describe how you're feeling at this point in the plot. Um, my feeling word would be, um, anxious. And and I use that word a lot when I was reading Wild Seed as well. I feel like this whole series is very anxiety raising. There's a lot of anxiousness. Um, like it's tense. <laughs> so yeah, my word would be anxious. Um, my feeling word. So yeah, I'm just going to put the question here. And your page number. Okay, and I'll put those up. So, all right. So one word to describe how you're feeling after reading the latest segment of the book and your page number. So um, while you're taking a look at that, Emory, you said you're on page 34, feeling disgusted. Just got to the end of chapter one. The prologue made me feel heartbreak and I definitely agree with anxious. Page 18, curious. Just started chapter two, part 20, page 28, annoyed. Seed to harvest version of 277, so midway through chapter one. Okay. Inevitability. Yeah. So again, one word to describe how you're feeling after reading the latest segment of the book and your page number. So page 20, curious. A lot of you are curious. Anxious. Yes. I came in late. This is my first time reading Octavia Butler and I'm on page 12 and you're feeling entranced. Yes. Ugh. Yep. Intrigued. Page 20, anxious. Yeah. 31, ugh. Um, you agree feeling anxious, anxious about what will happen next. Yeah. Finish the prologue feeling anxious. So there's a lot of anxiousness, anxious. Uh, so anxious, ugh. intrigued, entranced, and curious. Um, okay. So, so we're all feeling, a lot of us are feeling anxious and some of us are feeling, ugh. Um, and some of us are feeling curious. Um, so, hi, welcome back, Auntie. <laughs> um, you're feeling troubled and definitely anxious too. Uh, Imani, you're feeling excited. It's great. It's, it's always good to have an outlier. <laughs> um, so my question is, or my, my thinking, and I'd love for you to, to put your thoughts as well in the chat. Um, why, why do you think Octavia Butler, Octavia E. Butler wrote book two um, in such a way that it would invoke feelings of anxiety? So what what's the purpose, right? Because she was a very deliberate, very purposeful writer. Um, and she wrote because she wanted to show us things. And so part of the beauty of a slow read is that you can stop and just reflect. So um, if you'd like to share your answer in the chat, that's great. If you wanna just keep that as something to think about, um, then please please do that. Um, but, but why? Whenever you're, as you're reading, whenever you have 
feelings, um, maybe just pause and say, well, why would she do this to us? <laughs> Why would she want us to feel this feel this way? Why would she show this side of the character, right? So, for me, um, as I'm reading right now, I'm 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 getting a pretty good sense of Mary as a 19 year old, right? Um, and I, I I think that from Wild Seed. The assumption is that you would have read Wild Seed, and maybe what I'll say is somebody asked in the chat. Do I, do I need to read Wild Seed before um, Mind of My Mind? You don't have to. In fact, in the first part of the chapter, there's sort of enough um, background to kind of give you a sense of the relationships and so on. Um, but for the purposes of the slow read, we will assume that you've read Kindred and Wild Seed. So from a, a spoiler perspective, um, people might make comments about Wild Seed or Kindred, assuming that people have read read that. So that's 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 something you might want to be alive to. But you don't have to have read Wild Seed. If you do want to get a sense of what Wild Seed is about, you can also Google um, a synopsis of Wild Seed, a more comprehensive one that will give you like a, a, a chapter by chapter breakdown of what happened, so that you can um, kind of catch up in the series. Okay, so let's see what people have to say. Doro presses all the wrong buttons. And Nanny Pie 2, you're intrigued. Um, feel troubled and anxious. Oh, I think I already read those. Sorry, I just um, reread a few things. Um, and what I want to do before we uh, start the next sprint, which is going to be a 35 minute sprint, so get comfortable. Um, I want to read, I'm going to like read some of the discussion questions that are in the back of my, um, my book. I just want to see if, if any of them are spoilers. So what I'll do is, um, Okay, so maybe what I'll do is wait until I get up to uh, the page number. So the first question relates to page 30, so I won't read it until I get to page 30. So at least there's some order, completely arbitrary, but some order. All right, so your comments on anxiety. I feel the anxiety comes from the lack of power these women have. It feels like they are trapped and we feel trapped as well. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. You know, for me, for me, it's kind of like that. But the anxiety for me is also that it seems like there's always something that's about to happen and it'll be cataclysmic. Like there's no small um, trauma, right? All, all of the trauma, all of the crises feel very, very big in this story. So I feel like you know, the other shoe is going to drop at some point or that it's going to explode at some point. That's that's where I feel a lot of the anxiety. And the other issue is like, at some point, there's going to be a showdown, right? Like there's going to be some big epic battle because like the main question in this whole series seems to be, is Doro really immortal or can he actually, like, can we actually get rid of this dude, right? Um, and, and does Anyan want to do that? Um, what would it take? Right? Is uh, is everybody just like supposed to sit by while he continues this breeding project? To what end? For his own interest and longevity. So, is is anybody going to fight back? And what is that actually going to look like? Right. So I think for me, that's the anxiety is that there's this tense, like, you know, undercurrent of we despise everything you do, and you're so you're so powerful, but we really, really despise this. So what are we gonna do about it? So that's that's what comes up for me. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people are vibing with what you're saying, Christina. Oh, you never look at the back before you finish a book. Ooh, I do, all the time. You agree, Christina, it feels like almost claustrophobic to follow alongside the women. And it feels like Doro is also pressuring us as the reader. So um, pressuring us to do what, String Bean Books? Um, 
what do you what do you think? Um, and the thing that is important to me in all of this is that we're we're not only talking about women. Um, generally, we're talking about Black women, um, and so you know, it's there's something very unique about the experiences of Black women in all of Octavia Butler's work. Um, and so for 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 an, a near immortal black woman um, to make the decisions that she's made, I'm talking about Anyanwu and Wild Seed in relation to Doro. That's you know that that seeding of territory and that seeding of power, at least what it seems it appears to be, um, even though they've worked out some boundaries, right? That that is something that I find challenging to bear. The blurred lines being touched upon also stir up a lot of discomfort. Yes, they do. Um, and we will probably need to at some point just address content and trigger warnings because um, you know, we're already seeing uh, trigger warnings for sexual violence, violence against women, um, and um, general physical violence as well. There's also a really strong um, need to bring um, just an awareness about the like the conversations about mental health and disability and um, there, there's a lot there's a lot here about the um, about what an able body and able mind is and the value of life. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well as you're as you're reading as themes. Wasn't this one written before Wild Seed? I thought she introduced Mary in a way that I didn't miss Emma. Yeah, it was written before Wild Seed. The anxiety for me is definitely what Jerry said, like the suspense of all the terrible, what's going to happen, what's the climax event, the breeding project is for what end, there's definitely a bigger purpose. Yeah. Is Doro doing this to make the body he can have for himself and not have to keep transferring from one body to the next body? Interesting question. Um, yes, there's always another bomb to drop and we feel that Doro will be one to prevail, the one to prevail. It's hard to even hope he will be, it's hard to even hope he will be the one to die. Um, I, you know, I think, I, I thankfully don't remember any of the, any of the stories. So it, it's for me, like I'm reading it from the beginning. Um, and I think the pattern of the series was actually the hardest for me to understand when I, when I read it in my early twenties. So um yeah the the showdown the inevitable showdown um Dora's pressuring us to side with him and to give up our power to him just initial thoughts as this is my first time reading butler okay um i think that um what i'm seeing in mind of my mind is that we are um potentially being introduced to a more humanized, a more humanized version, a more compassionate view of Doro, even though we see how awful he is. Like there are some ways that he's described um, very early on in the book that are very different from how we saw him in Wild Seed. So um, in the idea of like Doro, well, Octavia E. Butler writing the character Doro so that he might be more relatable um, you know, yeah, certainly we get introduced early on to his relationship with Mary, and it might appear to be a more paternal, fatherly kind of relationship, but we shall see. Murders at the ultimate purpose for Doro is it perfect children with money and powers? Very good question. Hoping Mary throw a wrench in Doro's plan. Facts. Yes. Triggers galore, black women being owned, being bred, no free choice, white equals rich, black equals poor thus far. I read the series in my twenties, viewing it differently. And I think that part of um, the, the, the beauty of slow and luxurious reading is being able to, and especially slow and luxurious rereading, is to be able to compare your, if you remembered the story, to be able to compare your current view to what you thought of in the past, because of course you've written, you've written, you've learned, you've grown, right? In that, in that, however 
long it was between you being 20 and you now. Yeah, he is totally. Mary, I mean, yeah, we were, I mean, I'm only on page 21 and I've seen Mary take care of business. So it's good. And I guess, you know, that, that question's always in my mind, why have we been given Mary, right? So we've been given a lot of women um, that Doro has been in relation in relation with um, in various different ways. So why, why are we given Mary, right? At this particular moment in time. You're feeling nauseous and sad about Mary, especially they're all kept. Yes, yes, they are. All right, so we are now going to do a 35 minute sprint. Um, I'm just gonna set the timer to 35 minutes. All right, and here we go. Happy reading, see you in 35 minutes.
That was 35 minutes. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. What page are you on? And one word, uh, maybe a word to describe. Um, why don't you um, comment with the name of the character that you feel the most empathy for right now? So what page are you on? And what is the name of the character you feel the most empathy for? Let's see what you've said here. Okay, so I hope she, meaning Mary, grows to hate Doro. Her name is Telling Mary. Yeah, I, I was thinking that too. Does everyone fear Doro? I don't know that Emma fears Doro, but it's a good question. I'm almost done with chapter one, dread, as in I am dreading the future Doro has planned for Mary, but I know he is underestimating her. Yeah, so there's trigger warnings around sexual violence, trigger warnings around incest, trigger warnings around addiction, physical violence, um, ableism, sexism, patriarchy. Octavia E. Butler is bringing it all. So, okay, so we're now starting the comments on what page you're on and who you feel the most um, sympathy, compassion for right now. So page 33, Mary, page 304 in the bind up. So almost halfway through chapter three, Mary, 41, Mary, you fell asleep. So you're only on 31, most empathy for Mary. Chapter two, Mary, bind up of 293, nearly done with chapter two. And Sherry, who do you feel the most sympathy for right now or empathy? Page 39, Mary, fin oops, finish chapter one, Mary, 14% Vivian, Regina Renee, I want to know why you feel more sympathy or empathy for Vivian than for Mary. So that's cool. 288 Mary and Danielle Vivian. So yeah, so tell me about that. Why you, um, why you, for those of you, uh, Regina Renee and Danielle, um, Tell me about that. 31, I don't know. Cool. So I am on page 38 and I feel the most sympathy for Mary right now. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure, but I also, I'm also really excited for what I, I'm hoping will be a comeback at some point. So for Mary, like a revenge arc of some sort. Now that you think about it, you feel empathy for the women. These men are. Mm -hmm. Finish chapter two, you empathize with Mary. She's struggling with a lot, but still has a rebellious determination about her. Cool. All right. So um, we are at uh, the two hour mark. Um, and so just want to say we're going to end now. Um, but congratulations. Uh, we did it. We did the first, um, slow read. Yay. The first session of our slow read. Um, so some questions that people tend to ask, uh, are you allowed to read in between the slow read sessions? Of course. Um, but just be aware that, um, Potentially the majority of the people uh, will be reading along with the schedule. So if, you've, if you're further ahead, just be respectful in what you share in the comments. Um, I'm probably not going to be reading on my own. I'll be doing most of my reading um, on the slow read. So I will probably be starting tomorrow at page 38 or 39. Um, if you are annotating, 
uh, making notes in your book um, or use, you know, bedazzling it like me using stickers, washi tape, and that highlighter and stuff like that. Feel free to share your annotations by taking a photograph of the page that you're on and going over to our Instagram and upload or posting your picture. Um, I'm gonna be doing that tonight. I'm gonna take my a picture of my most annotated page from the slow read and upload it to, or post it. I was born in a decade. I keep on using the term upload, but post it to Instagram. Um, and for the next session, we are scheduled, I believe, to continue tomorrow. Um, so the next one is tomorrow at 7, same at 7 p.m. Um, you get onto the stream the same way you did today. Just uh, click on it and go ahead. So I'm just going to just going to take a few comments and then I have a few more um, announcements. Tati and Isis, if you have any announcements um, as well, just put it in the chat. Um, okay. Bree, the amount of times I've written the audacity in this book is unreal. Yep. That was fun, no problem, you're most welcome. Empathy, Every, but everyone on Carl's estate being mind controlled and enslaved, listen. Vivian has no agency, none. Okay, thank you for hosting, super excited for the next session. Thank you for being here. Uh, I get the empathy for Vivian. She and all the servants are mind enslaved, but I feel for Mary because she's aware. Fair. The audacity was my first annotation. So I want to see pictures of those annotations on Insta. You feel as if you know Vivian. E. And Wheeler, you know Vivian. Lots of people knowing Vivian. Disgusted by Carl. Got you. All right. So um, a couple of announcements. So the first announcement, let me see. I'm going to get to. So as you know, Sista Sci-Fi is where we point you to to get all of your books and um, black science fiction and fantasy related paraphernalia. Um, but I wanted to show you something that's super exciting. Um, and here it is. So okay, check this out. So Isis is going to be, hold on, make it bigger. Isis is on uh, selling Mind of My Mind t-shirts. Um, they are the vintage cover uh, and they are available on her website and the cost is $30. Um, so just so that you know, it is not connected to the Octavia E. Butler slow read, but it is potentially of interest to folks. So I will be running a vision board workshop on January 16th. It's called Our Destiny Among the Stars and it is an Octavia E. Butler inspired vision board workshop. So if you are interested in, uh, in that, then you can just take a look at the, um, it's on Eventbrite and it's called Our Destiny um, among the stars. I don't know if I can actually put a link in the chat, but I will try. Uh, here it is. Okay, so I will just put comment. I guess this will show up on the live stream, but I will also put that in the uh, the description of the um, of the YouTube video. Uh, so the workshop is called Our Destiny Among the Stars, and it is a vision board workshop inspired by the the work of Octavia E. Butler. It it might be of interest to you, uh, but it is not um, connected to the Octavia E. Butler slow read. It's just something that I'm doing that I would love to invite you to participate in and to purchase a ticket. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Yep, so I did share, so sistersci-fi.com um, is where you can go to pick up your books and also any merchandise. I also wanna let you know 
that survivor is Octavia E. Butler's, uh, one of the books from the Patternist series. It is out of print and very, very, very difficult to get. I got this at a conference and nearly lost it when I saw it on the table. Um, but Isis, through her magic, was able to get a digital digital copy of Survivor on, which is now for sale for $10. So you can get the ebook um, of this out of print, very difficult to get volume as part of the Patternist series. So just be aware that you can, you can pick that up as well. Yes, the shirt is awesome. Yes, 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 you're most welcome. Oh, you're welcome, Michelle. Yes, looking forward to tomorrow as well. Yes, a lot of people have been looking for that book. All right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Thank you for joining us for this slow read and uh, happy reading until I see you next. Bye.